Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to install Windows XP on Microsoft Hyper-V. So if you're missing the old days when we were using Windows XP, uh, you can now relive it by making a virtual machine running Windows XP. So I'm going to be doing this on uh, Windows 11, so if you have a professional version of Windows 11 or Windows 10, you could actually install Hyper-V, or actually enable Hyper-V, I should say, and then use it to create virtual machines. And if you have a Windows Home Edition, you could actually enable Hyper-V on there as well with a little tweak. So I'll put a link in the description for the video on how to do that in case you have Windows Home Edition. Okay, so let's just go through the process here. Click on New, Virtual Machine. Call this Windows XP. And you could change your location if you want to pick a different location than the default. And of course, you could customize your default location as well. Okay, we're going to do a Generation 1, since this is an older version of Windows. You might have problems if you do Generation 2, especially since it requires 64-bit version of Windows, which is not going to happen for Windows XP. Okay, so you could change the memory to whatever you like. I'll use 4 gigs for now, since it's just a test. And then if you want to keep the option for dynamic memory checked, you could do that as well. And so what this does is it assigns memory to the virtual machine as it's needed which saves memory on your host if you're running a bunch of other virtual machines or if you don't have a lot of memory on your host. Okay, we're going to use the default switch in this case. I have some other switches configured here. We'll just stick with the default switch. So we'll use NAT and get on the internet. Okay, so we're going to make a hard disk for it. I'm just going to make this 40 because Windows XP doesn't need 127 gigabytes. I will leave it in my default location here. Of course, you could change that. And of course, you could change the name of the virtual disk if you want. And then you can also attach a disk later if you want to do that. Okay, so we're going to use an ISO file to install it. So I will put a link in the description where you could download this ISO file. Let's browse to that. So this is Windows XP with Service Pack 3. So here's our summary here, called Windows XP, Generation 1, 4 gigs of RAM on the default switch. Here's our hard drive, and here's our operating system. Okay, so now we have it in our list here. We double click it to open the console. And then we click on Start to start the installation. All right, so we have the Windows Setup screen here. All right, press Enter to start Setup. F8 to agree with the license. Okay, so it found our 40 gig virtual disk here. So press Enter to install, or you can manually create a partition if you want to do that or break it up. Okay, we're going to do the NTFS file system. We'll do quick. Now it's going to format it and then start the installation. All right, copying files. This is usually pretty quick. All right, so now it's going to reboot. And of course, you don't want to press any key to boot from the CD again, because it'll start over. Okay, so as we go along here, I will kind of fast forward or pause the video so you don't have to sit here and watch the uh, status bar go across the screen. Okay, now we have our language options here. So you can put in a name and organization if you want. We'll just call this user Bob. Okay, now for the product key, which I have here. So you're gonna have to do the control alt left arrow to get out of here because it doesn't have the uh, enhancements installed. So I will type in the key real quick and I will also put this key in the description so you'll have a copy for yourself. All right, I'll click on next. Give it a name, we'll call this WinXP. 
administrator password. Let's put in the word password. Make a password whatever you like. Okay, date and time, everything looks good. All right, now it's going to do the network installation. Installing start menu items, registering components, saving settings. So the actual time to install this is much less than it says on the screen as you're going through it, because it said 39 minutes originally, and that was about three minutes ago. Okay, rebooting again. Okay, adjust the screen resolution. Okay, now we'll go through the GUI wizard here. Turn on automatic updates, even though it probably won't work since it's not supported any longer. Okay, let's go back to Bob again. Okay, so it doesn't fit too well on my screen. I'm recording at a low resolution for this, so it'll look better on your screen. All right, so now we have our start menu here with our programs. And our desktop, let's see what we have for internet. Internet Explorer. Of course, it's going to complain about no antivirus. Tour of XP, we don't care about. So it's not finding the network connection here. And that is because, let's go back to the settings. Network adapter. See here at the bottom, use a legacy network adapter instead of this network adapter to perform network-based installation of the guest operating system or when integration services are not installed on the guest operating system. So Windows XP doesn't support the integration services, so we're going to have to do that. So let's go back to add hardware. Actually, we're going to have to shut it down first. Okay, let's go to the settings. Let's do legacy network adapter, add, connect it to the default switch. Apply, and then we'll actually remove this one here just to make sure we don't have any problems. Apply. All right, so now we have the legacy network adapter attached to the default switch. So let's restart here and see what happens. You're also going to get this thing with the checkpoints. I always like to turn off the automatic checkpoints because they're more of a hassle than helpful. So we'll just leave it for now. Continue where we left off. Okay, found a new Ethernet controller. Same thing about the virus. Same thing about taking a tour. All right, let's see if it's configured already. All right, now we got Google. Let's do a search here. All right, looks like that's working. So the key is, like I said, let's go back out here. Back to the settings. Make sure you install a legacy network adapter, otherwise you're not gonna get internet connection on your virtual machine. Okay, so I will put a link in the description where you can download the ISO file for this. It will be at the top right of the page. Don't download anything you find in the comments, any links, just stick with the uh, links at the top right of the page. And then I'll also put the key for it as well. And then also a link how to enable Hyper-V for the Windows Home Edition. All right. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.